Hello curious minds, what if our future homes weren't cities but self-sustaining space habitats built to last for generations, could we actually make this a reality? You might have heard of the O'Neill Cylinder, we've already made a video about it, but today we're exploring another mind-blowing concept, the Bernal Sphere. The Bernal Sphere is one of the earliest and most fascinating concepts for a space habitat. First proposed in 1929 by the scientist J.D. Bernal, this design was meant to support human life beyond Earth, not just for short missions, but permanently. At its core, the Bernal Sphere is exactly what it sounds like, a giant hollow sphere floating in space, but it's much more than just an enclosed station. This megastructure would rotate to create artificial gravity inside, providing an Earth-like environment where people could live, work, and even farm their own food. So, how big is it? Bernal's original concept was about 16 kilometers 10 miles in diameter, with enough space to house between 10,000 and 30,000 people. It would be a fully self-sustaining ecosystem, complete with land for growing crops, residential areas, and massive mirrors that would direct sunlight inside to create a natural day and night cycle. Unlike a traditional space station, life inside a Bernal sphere wouldn't feel confined or mechanical. The landscape would curve upwards due to the spherical shape, creating a surreal but functional world, a miniature Earth in space. But how exactly does it work? And why did Bernal choose a sphere instead of other shapes like a ring or a cylinder? Let's break it down. So, how exactly does the Bernal sphere work? Unlike space stations that rely on microgravity, this megastructure is designed to simulate Earth's gravity by spinning. The entire sphere rotates at about one revolution per minute, just fast enough to create artificial gravity similar to Earth's. The centrifugal force pushes everything outward, meaning that for people inside, the inner surface of the sphere becomes the ground. But gravity isn't the only thing that makes life possible. A Bernal sphere would need to provide everything a human settlement requires, air, water, food and energy. So, how does that happen? First, oxygen would be recycled through a closed-loop system, using plants and algae to maintain breathable air, just like Earth's ecosystem. Water could come from asteroid mining or be recycled within the habitat itself. And for food, large-scale hydroponic farms and even traditional soil-based agriculture could provide fresh produce. Sunlight is another challenge. Since space habitats don't have an atmosphere to scatter light, giant external mirrors would be used to direct sunlight into the sphere, creating a natural day and night cycle. The result? A stable, Earth-like environment where people could live comfortably, grow food, and even see blue skies, despite being in the vacuum of space. With artificial gravity, a self-sustaining ecosystem and plenty of room to grow, the Bernal sphere could be a true home in space. But why a sphere? Why not a ring or a cylinder? Let's explore why this design was chosen. So, why did J.D. Bernal choose a sphere instead of other shapes like a ring or a cylinder? It turns out a sphere is one of the most efficient shapes for a space habitat. Here's why. First, structural strength. A sphere naturally distributes stress evenly across its surface. This means it can withstand internal pressure from the atmosphere inside and external forces from space without requiring excessive amounts of material. Second, radiation protection. A sphere minimizes the surface area exposed to space while allowing for a thick outer shell or even a layer of water to absorb radiation, making it easier to shield than other shapes. Third, efficient sunlight management. The Bernal Sphere's design includes external mirrors that reflect and direct sunlight inside, creating a consistent Earth-like day and night cycle without the need for artificial lighting. Now while a sphere is great for compact, efficient space habitats, it does have limitations. It's smaller than an O'Neill cylinder, meaning it may not be the best long-term solution for housing millions of people. But for an early space colony, the Bernal Sphere is an incredibly practical choice. So, could we really build one? Let's look at the challenges and what it would take to make this a reality. While the concept is scientifically sound, there are major challenges standing in the way. Let's break them down. First, construction. The Bernal Sphere is massive. It would be impossible to launch something this big from Earth. Instead, we'd have to build it in space using materials from asteroids or the moon. But large-scale space construction is something we haven't mastered yet. We've assembled structures in space before like the International Space Station, but nothing close to this scale. We'd need advanced robotic builders, AI-driven automation, and massive amounts of raw materials. Next, cost. 
Building a Bernal Sphere would require trillions of dollars and a global effort over decades. Right now, even sending small payloads into orbit is expensive, so we'd need major advances in space mining, in-orbit manufacturing, and reusable rockets to make it affordable. Fortunately, asteroid mining could provide key materials like iron, nickel, and water, reducing our dependence on Earth's resources. If we develop this industry, the cost of space construction could drop dramatically. Even if we solve the engineering problems, there's still the human factor. Life inside a Bernal sphere would be completely different from Earth. How would people adapt to living in a closed ecosystem, away from the natural world? Astronauts on long missions experience isolation, stress, and even changes in their perception of time. A Bernal sphere would need to be designed with large open spaces, artificial weather, and psychological support to keep its residents happy and healthy. So, is a Bernal sphere possible? Let's talk about what the future holds for the Bernal Sphere. Could we actually see these floating megastructures in our lifetime? While it's hard to say exactly when we'll build one, the progress we're making in space exploration and technology is setting the stage for their possibility. In recent years, space technology has advanced rapidly. We've seen reusable rockets, private companies sending people to space, and even plans for lunar bases. These milestones show us that building in space is becoming more feasible. The question is, how much longer will it take before we have the tech to build something as ambitious as the Bernal Sphere? With projects like asteroid mining and robotic space construction, the necessary resources and infrastructure are within reach. Imagine a future where mining asteroids for metals and water is routine, and AI-powered robots build entire habitats in orbit. We're already working toward this future, and it could lay the foundation for creating large-scale space habitats like the Bernal Sphere. The Bernal Sphere may not be the first space habitat we build though, it's likely that we'll start with smaller structures, perhaps something more similar to a space station or a lunar colony, before taking on a massive, self-sustaining sphere. These early colonies will test our ability to live and thrive in space, and from there we'll build bigger and more complex habitats. The first successful colonies will probably be on the Moon or Mars as we establish footholds beyond Earth. Once we prove we can survive off-planet, we'll be ready to dream bigger. So, when could we see a Bernal Sphere in orbit? If we continue on our current trajectory, it's likely that within the next 100 to 200 years, we could be building the first of these giant rotating habitats. But like with all groundbreaking technologies, it will take decades of research, collaboration, and innovation to make the Bernal Sphere a reality. The future of the Bernal Sphere depends on our ability to push the limits of space exploration, construction, and sustainability. But if we keep making the right strides, these colossal spheres could one day be the birthplace of humanity's first true homes in space. And there you have it, the Bernal Sphere, an incredible vision for the future. But could we actually build one in the next century? Would you leave Earth to live inside a massive floating space habitat? Let us know in the comments, and if you found this fascinating don't forget to check out our video on the O'Neill Cylinder, another revolutionary space habitat. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss an exploration into the future of space colonization. Thanks for watching, until next time keep looking up.